Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Vitiva Capital Management and our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports, I would like to welcome you all to another edition of the Vitiva Breakfast Meeting. It is Wednesday, the 21st of April, 2021. Please note that this meeting is set to last for 30 minutes and is also being recorded. The audio file may be shared with third parties. It is also being broadcast live on our Vitiva online page on Facebook. On our agenda today, we'll get a usual rundown of the equity and fixed income space from the traders for those respective markets, after which we will conclude with our media partners from Frontier Africa Reports with their own updates. After this, if time allows, we will give participants an opportunity to ask questions if they have any. We will now start off with Shimon and the equity space. Good morning, Shimon. Good morning, Chidoze, and good morning, everyone. Um, we start off with performance of um, markets across West Africa, and starting off with BRVM, um, the composite index ended the session on a significantly positive note with a 1.33% upward close. Um, the gain made it a 3.82% weekly appreciation and um, tilting the overall year to date return in that market for the first time this year to a positive 87 bips. Um, it was a generally positive session um, as, as data shows 779% and 691% improvement in volume and turnover in that market. Um, SMB Cote d'Ivoire led the gainers with 7.45% appreciation and which is on the back of significant improvement in its earnings. We, we expect the index to sustain the bullish sentiment um, in, today's, in today's session. And moving to Ghana, the benchmark index also closed in the green with 43 bips upward, um, upward close. Just like the previous session, Cow Bank and MTN closed as the gainers in the market to support the positive close as Unilever Ghana uh, maintained the downward share price movement with a 9.96% negative close. Um, activity level improved generally in the day with over 133% in, uh, increase in turnover. Um, for today, um, we expect Cow Bank and MTN Ghana to continue to drive performance in the market uh, with, on the back of decent corporate actions that both um, companies declared that both companies declared earlier earlier I think sometime earlier in the month. Uh, moving to Nigeria, the positive sentiment across the West Africa market was sustained, with index advancing for three bips. The banks the banks majorly drove the green close with um, Zenith Bank. GT Bank and UBA, among the others, closing the day higher. Um, a 104 bips gain in MTN also supported a second consecutive positive close. Um, and speaking to MTN, speaking to MTN, we, we, we didn't see the large cross in the name like, like, like yesterday as activity level um, normalized with just 2.7 2 billion turnover recorded as um, the volume of shares traded also moderated um, to 33%. 33 um, aside, from, aside from sustaining the positive flows in the index, the tier one bank, um, banking names like GT Bank, like Zenith and UBA, like I mentioned, they accounted for 52% of turnover in that in that session, as a subsector led this sect, um, sectoral performance with 1.75% upward close, and um, we saw that it was just the oil and gas sector that closed down on that in that um, se in that um, session. Um, quickly to some company news: um, Access Bank announced that it has entered a binding agreement with um, ABC Holdings Limited to acquire 
percent shareholding in the in the Botswana Bank. Um, well, as the company noted, um, that this is a, this is in fundraise to improve their footprint in the Southern African space. Um, we, however, saw muted reaction to these announcements by investors in the name um, during yesterday's um, session. So I guess investors are still not, um, you'll probably have to watch to see what, um, obviously, this, this will be affecting their Q1. Um, this will be affecting um, their result for 2011, sorry, for 2021. So we're probably not going to see that much effect in the share price of the company. So going into today, with the market breadth strengthening um, two times, with 24 advances and 12 decliners in yesterday's session, we expect sentiment to remain positive as investors continue to cherry pick the banking names. Um, even as we await the Q1 results of more corporate, of more corporate um, to a larger extent, this should also determine market direction. Um, also, though we, though we saw decent Q1, well, for the ones that have been that have released, that's the Q1 results. Though we saw decent performance for Q1 2021 in, for UBA with a 6% and 27% top line and bottom line growth. Market response was, however, muted. We just, <clears throat> we just um, 71 bips appreciation in the, um, in the name in yesterday's trade. We'll continue to watch and to see names with decent entry opportunities and advice accordingly. Thank you very much. That'll be it for equities market. Thank you, Shil. We will now move to Amora Gay for fixed income and currency. Good morning, Amora Gay. Good morning, Chidoze. Good morning, everybody. I'll start with the money market. Um, there's five more maturities of about 20 billion that came into the system yesterday. The money market is still very liquid. A system opened 43.7 billion positive yesterday, a slight decline from what we recorded on Monday, which was 44.2 billion positive. So as a result, rates stuck in the double digit region to trade between 12 to 30 percent levels. So our expectation for today is that the money market will trade at similar levels, barring any major shock to the system. I'll move on to the FS market. So yesterday, the parallel market lost four Naira to trade at 486 Naira to a dollar, while the earning window traded at a high of 437.41 Naira to a dollar, closing at 410.67 Naira to a dollar, a slight decline from what was recorded on Monday. In the I&E window, we saw significant improvement in turnover as an e turnover closed at $99.49 million yesterday, coming from the $69.71 million recorded on Monday. Moving on to the treasury biz market, we saw moderate activity in the TBS market yesterday as continued demand for the NTB, NTB papers was witnessed across the mid to long end of the curve. There was, also, there was also significant demand for the newly issued one-year paper, and that crashed offers on that paper to below 8.3% levels from above 8.7% levels that we saw on Monday. We also saw some OMO interest. Players were particularly interested in the August papers at 6.7 levels. However, market offers were below that. So as a result, few trades were consummated on that end. We also saw slight activity in the NTB, in the special NTB. So overall, a few trades were consummated across the curve because of the disparity between the offer and bids. So our expectation for today is that the TBS market will trade on a muted note as the bond auction takes center stage. I'll conclude with the bonds market. It was a quiet trading session in the bonds market yesterday. We saw some selective buy and sell interest across the mid to long end of the benchmark curve. Though the wide bid and ask spread continues to persist in the market. We also saw average rates remain relatively flat 
and the 2026, 2027, 2045, and the 2050 saw the most activity yesterday. Today, there is a bond auction. The DMO is offering um, 150 billion across the three tenors on offer. The general expectation on the market is that there will be a risk spike across the three tenors at the auction today. The 2027 closed at 10.5% in the last auction. So the expectation for us is that the marginal rate will be between 11 to 12% at this auction, while 2035 closed at 11.5% at the previous auction. We expect the marginal rate to close between 12 to 13%. 2045 closed at 12% in the last auction. Our expectation is that it, the marginal rate will close between 12.6% to 13.5%. So given that the secondary market has been trading at extremely high levels and looking at the bond auction results for the past years, there has never really been a significant spike up to about 200 basis points in, at a single auction, apart from the auction that happened in February where we saw rate increased by more than 200 basis points across all the tenors that were on offer. So when you look at that auction very clearly, you see that prior to that auction, the stop rate we are single digit. So it made sense for them to improve it by more than 200 basis points. Given that currently now we have, um, we already had double digit across all the tenors at the previous auction, 2027 was at 10.5. 2035 was at 11.5 and 2045 was at 12%. Though secondary market has been trading at way higher levels, at a point, the 2045 touched the highs of um, 14%, which is exactly 200 basis point more than we had closed at the previous auction. So though we expect rates to spike across these three auctions, we don't think they are gonna increase by up to 200 basis points. So we think it's still gonna be by at most 100 basis point or below. So that's why we are giving these projections. So our expectation for today is that the bonds market will also trade on a very quiet note, just like we expect the TV's market to trade. So the reason being that attention will largely be on the bond auction that is taking place today. That'll be all for fixed income. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will now move to Boston from Prince Africa Airport and their updates. Good morning, boss. Yes, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, you can hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, th thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Uh, actually, we'll have a few uh, uh, stories we're, we're talking on this morning. Uh, but we'll start with the uh, news from the Lagos uh, Commodity Exchange that uh, an indigenous firm, Vorian Corelli, is floating 20 billion naira uh, uh, exchange traded notes on the uh, Lagos uh, Commodity Exchange, which is a new one. This is the first of its uh, uh, kind looking to raise this fund to, uh, to make um, this possible. And, and this will be quite uh, interesting, again, looking at the agriculture sector and what the uh, authorities uh, and the private sector are trying to do in raising that market. Uh, we got the news yesterday, and I'm sure we have that in the kitty about Axaman Side Insurance uh, posting a 15% uh, not net profit for full year 2020. Again, this is one big insurer. We all know what this means despite the pandemic last year. They were able to pull this particular uh, 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 feet about 56% uh, net profit. And, and that's, that's true from the uh, local market. If you get a bit wider within the uh, rest of the of the continent, uh, any season within uh, other jurisdictions like uh, East Africa where Bamburi Cement reported late yesterday, this is one of the largest cement company, but its uh, revenue was down 5%. The company says it will still pay dividend and it's per share in at about two, shillings 89 profit after tax about 1.1 billion uh, a shilling the authorities are still uh worried over how to move ahead with the one percent minimum tax rule which the which kicked off this year there's a court of uh, court order that uh, suspended that the kenya revenue authority which is equal of nigeria's frs is appealing that particular order suspending the one minimum tax rule whether you make any profit or whatever you pay a minimum of one percent tax to the government 
of, uh, of Kenya, and that is still being uh, uh, contested. Family Bank, which is one of the unlisted bank in the Nairobi uh, markets, is redeeming its corporate bond notes so worth about 2.018 billion uh, local currency, that's uh, the shillings. Within the Ethiopian market, the privatization of the Ethiopian Telecom is still on, but Visa, which is one of the largest card issuers in the world in the rank of MasterCard, is working with Moneta Technologies to support digital payments within Ethiopia. A few months ago, Ethiopia floated uh, a platform that allows uh, uh, foreigners who are Ethiopians in diaspora uh, to do uh, diaspora remittances and all of that. So the whole space for digital payment, for uh, FinTech and all that is expanding rapidly in Ethiopia. Again, they're looking at their nearest neighbor, which is uh, Safaricom in Kenya and how much progress they've made within uh, that um, particular uh, space. Uh, uh, in South Africa, the, there are quite a few changes in, in ABSA. If we remember last week, ABSA closed down one of his uh, managed funds, uh, asked all the investors to step forward and collect their funds because they said there are issues around the funds and all of that. Now they've gotten a new CEO, an interim group chief executive officer, Jason Quinn, will be there. Angola is Africa's uh, second largest oil producer, Fitch. Uh, ratings uh, estimates Angola will grow 1.7% uh, this year. If we seek around that uh, story of a growth outlook for this year, Zimbabwe, uh, the Minister for Finance, Lynn Tube, is maintaining 7.4 growth for this year. The President Munagagwa was not quite happy. He wants the growth forecast to be lowered. This is much, much higher than about 3.1%. That's IMF forecast for Zimbabwe. But the finance minister was optimistic they will get 7.4% growth this year on improved farm output. Remember, they had a very major drought last year in Zimbabwe, and they got a couple of millions of dollars from the Africa uh, uh, Risk Capacity, which is the uh, specialized agency set up by the African Union and supported by the EFDB. They got these funds and they have been able to manage the drought and uh, secure some uh, insurance and risk for farmers in Zimbabwe. And they are moving on. So the government or the finance ministry is optimistic. They will get 7.4%. This and the Badaz is going to be an outlier, by the way. Uh, finishing up with the Fitch uh, in Egypt. And this is one story we are following very closely, in particular Egypt. For Fitch ratings to cut Egypt's real GDP growth to 2.9% for this year, uh, 2020, 2021 period is quite uh, disturbing. Uh, we've seen a few more, a little bit of disturbing is news coming out of Egypt in terms of uh, other economic data, but we're following that very closely uh, uh, moving forward. Thank you very much, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. We have now come to the question and answer portion of the meeting. If you would like to ask a question, you can raise your hand and you'll be given an opportunity to ask a question or you can use the comment box and we will treat your question. I see we have no questions today. That means we have come to the conclusion of our meeting. On behalf of Vitiva and our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. We continue to encourage everyone to remain safe. And we hope that you join us again tomorrow at 8.30 AM. And we hope that everyone has a good day. Good morning.